Hello and welcome to One on One on Plus TV Africa. My guest today is Tara Feladurutoye. Tara is the CEO and founder of House of Tara International. She was listed by Forbes as one of the 50 most powerful African women and was also mentioned as one of the global leaders by World Economic Forum. Thank you, Tara, for joining us. Thank you, Irene. Thank you welcome for to the House of Tara. <laughs> I know we're in your space, but it's okay. <laughs> Thank you. You are welcome to the House of Tara. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about COVID-19. Mm. At the time when you heard that COVID-19 has been imported into Nigeria, what was your reaction? Well, as a business that 80% um, of our employees are professional makeup artists who work in all our 28 stores across the country, I knew that the employees are going to be exposed because the the demographic of our customers are people who are very well traveled. And so immediately there was a risk of us uh, either putting steps in place to prevent, but unfortunately there wasn't even enough information about the, about the virus to be able to, to know what to do. So we immediately shut down. We shut down our stores. Um, I think five days after the Lagos state government had also sent out a message saying that stores, uh, people should close down the stores. So one week before, five days before, we shut down immediately because of the risk for our employees, but also the risk of customers who, who come into the store and being exposed to other customers who may have also come into the store as well. And that was the first reaction for us as a business, to shut down the stores and get our employees in a place where they are safe and to be ensure that our facility is not a place where it breeds the virus because mm -hmm. of interactions between customers. Now, you did mention interaction between customers. The beauty industry is one that the beauty professionals are in close proximity with each other. What measures, what safety measures have you put in place in your business mm. to ensure that there is you know, safety for both the clients and you know, your staff? Uh, so for every, um, everyone who walks into any of the stores, so for example, this location where you are, um, there, there's a, there's a um, first step is as you walk in, you have to, your temperature needs to be checked. Um, there's no entrance, there's a sign that says no entry without a face mask. So if you do not have a face mask, then you can't even enter the facility. Uh, but after that, that, your temperature is checked. After your temperature is checked, you have to wash your hands following WHO uh, 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 requirements. And the washing of hands is done outside the building. Um, so if you don't do that, then you can't get entrance into the building. And then you have to use a sanitizer. If you walk into the, when you walk into the store, the professional makeup artists who's on ground in the past would have four uh, makeup artists on ground working in every store, but now we've had to reduce that number to 60%. So some, sometimes we'll have only one person or two persons. We're encouraging our customers to use uh, appointments, booking appointments. We send them um, an app where they can book their appointment and, they, and then we can know who's been here at every point in time. When you walk into the store, immediately the makeup artist wears their overall. Um, the overall is supposed to be a protective measure um, against them interacting closely with the customer just in case. Um, they also wear goggles, they wear face mask, and they wear face shield. Um, they're no longer allowed to wear artificial hair, wigs, weave-ons, and, and the likes. Everyone has to have their hair covered with the hair nets uh, because we know that the hair has a way can also um, harbor the virus. Um, makeup artists have to learn, have now le had to learn how to do makeup wearing gloves. Um, so the face shield, the face mask, um, the goggles, the gloves, the overall, and also the feet. When the I forgot to also mention, when the customer walks in, their shoes is, an, is a disinfectant uh, to, that is placed on their shoes to ensure that even if their, their footwear is carrying anything, that disinfectant also um, kills it. When the customers are being served on a workstation like this, the workstation First of all, has to, the first protocol is to spray it with a dis disinfectant, right? Uh, now we're encouraging all our customers to use their own professional products. So now they have to buy their own brushes, which in the past was only um, used by makeup artists. But now if you're walking in the same way you go into a nail technician's place and you take your cuticle trimmer, that wasn't the situation 20 years ago, but today that's standard. So for us now, it's going to be standard for every customer to buy their own professional makeup kits, uh, makeup brushes, and use their own products while, while here. Immediately the customer is, uh, the service is over, um, the gloves are disposed immediately, um, and yet again, the, their outfits are disinfected. The overalls, the wear, are disinfected. And these are some of the things that we put in place. We're, we're also ensuring that customers walking through one door and exit through another door and to ensure that there's a 
there's, uh, we prevent two customers from meeting at the same time mm -hmm. to ensure that there's social distancing. If you also look at the, the, the spaces between the workstations, it's going to be expanded as well to ensure that even if there are two, two customers in the store, they're not in close proximity to each other. Now, what advice would you give to other makeup professionals out there? Mm. So it's the same thing. Um, uh, first of all, safety over money. Um, of course. Um, and we need to take care of ourselves and protect ourselves. One of the things I've done in the last few days is to host, and I've been hosted on different platforms talking about what we as a company are doing as, as our standard and what we're encouraging others within the industry to do the same, to do same. Now, um, I know that for House of Tara, you have online platforms where you already sell some of your products. However, we see technology gaining more ground within the African um, space, particularly mm -hmm. in developing countries. So what more contribution do you think technology has to play mm -hmm. for those in the beauty industry? Um, I think for us internationally, to many of the developed countries, now if you want to buy a product, you can use uh, an app to determine your shade and what have you. Um, that is, we haven't gotten there yet, but we're moving closer because we also realize that a lot of our customers are now becoming more technology savvy and there's a less fear. In the past, customers would be not inclined to make bookings, um, use the app, app to, you know, to make a booking for, for, for an employer, a makeup artist. But today they're now more open to doing so mm -hmm. to, because they're thinking about their safety. Um, I, I think that going forward as well, um, um, yes, we're using social media to, to sell our products and what have you. We're going to also have an app, our own app, which makes it easier for you to purchase a product. And I think there are going to be more and more makeup artists today who are going to be more inclined to using technology going forward. The articles would usually suggest that beauty industries would be immune to any form of recession. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Would you say that it's the same for it's the same for, for us? Yeah, for yes, for us in Nigeria. in Nigeria. Okay, so um, in the past, where we've had recessions, um, we haven't seen the impact um, significantly because you know our products are what you call um, the the little luxuries, right? Um, there's a psychological effect that cosmetic has on people. Um, so whereas your Chanel bag or your LV bag is very pricey and gives you a hump. You can have the same feeling if you buy a lipstick, a red lipstick. And the mm -hmm. minute you put on your lipstick, you put on your foundation, they're not as expensive as your bag, but they give you the same feeling that you have when you carry an expensive bag. So um, this is the reason why um, there's, you know, there's a talk about recession, being recession-proof. Um, however, this is not a recession. This is a pandemic, and we've never experienced it before. Um, and what we've experienced is, first of all, all our stores are closed across the country, which means that every day that the stores are shut, we're not generating any money, right? And all our employees are sitting at home, not doing These are young people, vibrant people, who have always been um, enterprising and, and hardworking and committed to their work. And those of, those of them who live in fast-paced cities like Lagos have to leave home at 5 a.m., mm -hmm. right? Today, they're stuck at home, um, restless, bored, stiff. Very bored. Very bored, <laughs> right? And then knowing that the business and the company where they work is not generating any money, there's a fear of the uncertainty. And so um, we, I believe that um, this is not really about a recession per se. It's more around the pandemic and the fear. And that it's not just that people don't have money, it's also the fear of their own safety. And so my concern is that we do not know what, how the impact is going to be. But what we're going to do is know that this is our new normal and begin to adjust. Um, and one of the things that we've done is we've shaped a culture as makeup artists. We've shaped culture as beauticians in Nigeria. And I believe that we can do the same. We've done it before. Nigerians they used to wear makeup for every party. Mm -hmm. At some point, it was only brides who were getting their makeup done. Uh, <laughs> that has changed. Mothers are getting their makeup done. Aunties are getting their makeup done for the wedding. Brides, bridesmaids are getting their makeup done. And, and even though that we change that, we can still change and reintroduce a new culture. And this is what I'm saying to makeup artists across the country. Do not be afraid because fear has a way of tormenting and it doesn't give you inspiration and insight. Of and course. so if we, if we focus on, on having faith, um, having hope rather than despair, ideas and opportunities will begin to see. One of the things I'm going to be talking about is what are the opportunities that exist in this new economy and it is possible for us to see those opportunities. So we're going to hold your thought right there because I want to know how this is going to impact on the beauty industry post COVID-19, but this will be after the break. We'll take a quick break now. You're still watching one on one on Plus TV Africa with Tara Dorotoye.
you're still watching one on one on Plus TV Africa, we've been speaking with Tara Fela Dorotoye. All right, then, Tara. So, we, we've been talking about the impact of COVID 19 on the beauty industry. How would this affect the way you do business moving forward post COVID 19? Um, I think, you take it from a standpoint of um, the, the customers. Um, I think that one of the things that this is going to do is to shape, change how we um, research what our customers want. Um, because in the past, we've already had a system uh, of getting feedback from customers to know what they need, uh, what House of can, what problems House of can solve. Uh, but, you know, we've had a system that works, but we've never had a situation where there was a pandemic. Mm -hmm. And I think that now what is going to be different is that we're going to consider as we create um, and assess the situation that we find ourselves, we'll always have to say, what if there is a pandemic? What if this comes of back course. again? Mm -hmm. and, and that's one of the things that's going to change about how we do business. And what are your current realities as a business owner um, with all of this? One of them is, you know, in terms of terms and conditions for employees, we never could have imagined that we could be in a place where we were not generating any money, right? And we've been on this for two months. Mm -hmm. um, and we didn't have any, um, any, um, any, of, any terms uh, of engagement for employees in a situation where like there's this. a pandemic mm -hmm. um, uh, or where there is a shutdown in stores. Uh, if there's a war, we, these are things that we never considered. And, and now we're going to, this is what Because we probably didn't think it was ever going to happen. No, it was possible. It wasn't impossible, right? Um, and so even how we respond, um, thinking of around mental well-being of our employees, um, that has always, I mean, we have a very strong culture of care within the, within the company, but this is even more so because I spent a lot of time in the last two months engaging employees more than I, I have ever had to um, and created care groups um, and with the care groups managing a team of people and just checking in on them and just asking them how they are heads are doing, how their hearts are doing, how they're feeling in this time, what's, what, you know, what feelings are they having, and constantly having Zoom meetings just to check in. Um, these are not things that we had in the past, but we've had to introduce uh, for, the, for the employees to ensure that our people are stable mentally. Uh, we, there's also the, the, the concern around when we reopen. Um, and then managing all that um, and, uh, and asking our, our, uh, our health partners to check in on everyone to, you know, what do we need to do from a mental well-being, mental state well-being to okay. check on people to see that they're emotionally stable enough to return because a lot of anxiety, right, that has come um, from the period of staying back at home and not being exposed to working on a daily basis. And so these are some of our realities. Well, mental well-being of our employees is of, of great concern to us. Um, the, 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 the loss, the revenue loss, uh, of course, of, of this year, it's also a great concern, but I'm, I'm also very hopeful of and course. to create mm -hmm. new things and force everyone to come out of a place where we have become settled. Oh, we pioneered an industry. Yes, yeah, great, but what else, right? And I think this is that period where it's going to force us to do so. What has all of this taught you? What lessons have you learned from the pandemic? I, I think one from a, from a spiritual standpoint that you know, as much as we want to control the world, we do not have the power to do so. And look at it, we've just suddenly stopped, the entire world has stopped, and we haven't found a solution to it, right? And so there's a, for me, there's a, a, a renewed dependence on, on a supreme being, right? There's a new dependence on the supreme being that this world is not really ours, right? And, and, and it was created by someone else, and therefore, that, if that someone else says, you know what, well, pause, then we you have, have to pause. pause, and this is what has happened. Um, and, but I think what I love the most also is it's, it's the time that I'm spending with my family, uh, with my children. You know, they they all grown now, and, and we never have have had this time where we can have breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I, I don't I don't even remember that that's possible in the past. And my boys are cooking, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and doing their chores. Right in the past, that wouldn't happen, but this has forced that to happen, and, and mm -hmm. the bonding. And so, as much as it's a, it seems like a doom spirit, I'm also grateful for the bright lights that I've seen. And I recently said to the team, I said, you know, for those of you who are excited um, about this season and who are going through good times, there are times that you may go through a bad patch. But remember to keep the light on in your window because somebody else is watching. Mm -hmm. Now, we see that across different governments, there are palliatives that have been put in place to support different businesses. What's your take on this? 
Um, unfortunately, I don't know anyone who has benefited from it, from, the, from this uh, from the support um, that that government is giving. It's unfortunate that it's taking such a long time um, and for many, apart from us as a business, we're also talking about micro entrepreneurs. As a business model, we have a lot of young people who are rich sell retailers of our tire products who have a business from interacting with the customers on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And as much as the government has focused on giving food and reliefs um, to to, to what they call the vulnerable in society. Many of our micro-entrepreneurs can easily become the vulnerable in society simply because they do not have the opportunity to interact with customers as they used to previously. And so my call to government is you need to think beyond what you consider the vulnerable in the society. You need to think about the micro-entrepreneurs who have been trading and generating 100,000 in a month, generating 80,000 in a month, mm -hmm. but unfortunately do not have that opportunity because people are not interacting, right? And they have to consider them and, and see what can be done. But the response time is too slow. It needs to be heightened. There needs to be an increase in the speed in which this is being addressed. Otherwise, as much as we have 90 million poor people in Nigeria, soon that number is just going to drastically increase uh, by people who are well-educated, who have funded small business, tiny micro-businesses, who can easily fall into the, this category of the poor and the vulnerable. And how would you, um, what's your reaction to the federal and state government's approach to the pandemic mm. curbing? Yes, I, unfortunately, um, my response to that is, is, is that, you know, I, I, I do not see, I do not see that the approach is effective, mm. right? Um, there are few countries that are, their approach have been effective. Unfortunately, Nigeria is not the West, and so I, I guess government will have to find what works as we go along. But there are little things like, for example, before we opened, we wanted to do an N NCDC uh, uh, ch check. We wanted to do a test for entire em employees as people resume to check that everyone is Most not time. is not infected, mm -hmm. right? You couldn't get NCDC on the phone, right? We called them for three days stretch. Finally, we got through it once, and as the, we got through, they says, "Oh, let us give you a Lagos number." The line cut off, and guess what? We was we were not able to get through again. So how on earth are people going to actually get tested if they need to get tested, for example, mm -hmm. if there's nothing in place to make that happen? It's unfortunate. But what I've told everyone is regardless of how efficient a government is, America, developed countries are not do getting it right. If Nigeria doesn't get it right, our only trust will have to be in God at this time. And what would, you be, what would be your advice in terms of putting processes and structures mm -hmm. that would benefit businesses such as yours? Mm. I think, I think we need, the, the government needs to work with, um, with groups, um, leaders, group leaders of, the, of, mm -hmm. of different industries and, and, and walk through a, a team of people who know where the issues are um, and how to address them. So for example, in our own case, it would be oh, how, how long do you ensure that you're going to keep people employed and pay them when you're not generating any money? If government says our businesses can't reopen, how do we fund Survive. the number of mm -hmm. people that we, we're employing? This is a real issue for us. And there has to be a group that's able to assess and say these are the real issues for a company like House of Tara and the likes. And therefore, this is how to respond to them. Tara Faladurote, thank you so much for joining me on One on One. You're welcome. Thank so you for having me. me. Mm -hmm. And that's all on One on One. For more content of this nature, please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can also follow us on DSTV channel 408.